Macedonia did a 50 and this is a video response to Novabug and it's Friday Falsum number 13 favourite developers and publishers. Right so we've got a, an unhonourable mention to begin with because well and that's Kanamai because yeah they might have made some of the best games in the world and literally they grew up in the, in the early 80s and 90s pretty much had their name in it it made great game and worth playing. But as we all know, recently they've just become one of the worst companies in the world. I mean, prime example of badness. I mean, I was literally when I was coding this, just read that Metal Gear Solid 5. They're going to basically make for the online mode for the Japanese version and the Steam version. They're going to have the online currency in the game have an expiry date on it. Now this is something that's added into the game. This is how crap they've got. As a yeah, but yeah, that's the reason why they're not worth it for these far because yeah, they might make some of the best games, but now they just treat everyone like dirt and that is one of the most idiotic company pretty much around. I mean, they pretty much destroy any goodwill they would have from anyone with the stuff they've done. And they just don't care. <laughs> to either, which makes it even worse. Right, so let's go on to the real list. <laughs> Right, so number one, and that's going to be Treasure. Mm. Yep, Treasure. So we usually don't actually are related to, to Kanamai because those actually ex Kanamai employees. They made, definitely worked on the original Contra. But yeah, but as we know, they made the, the very first game they made is Gunstar Heroes, which still to this day is one of the better action games out there, which is insane. And they just don't make games like that anymore. They're all insane amount of boss fights in it. I mean, it's not just like modern games. It's like, ooh, look. I mean, look at Halo, for modern Halo for example, you're looking to get two unique boss fights in the game. Look at Gunstar Heroes, there's like three or four in the first stage alone. <laughs> yeah, completely insane game. That one is. But yeah, and Treasure himself made very few bad games. I've never made a game which is completely horrible or unplayable. Even if they're just making something up a random TV show or something, they make a good game. I mean, I think they're first beat em up fighting game. Yu Yu Hakusho and the Mega Drive are actually one of the first four player fighting games out there. On consoles anyway. And that then years later ended up becoming basically like remade that into a bleach game. For the DS and they're probably the best fighting games on the DS as well. And yeah and everyone you can always tell a treasure game apart from most other game companies because they always have an insane amount of bosses in their games. I mean, it's just like a boss in for like 10 seconds almost. <laughs> it gives an alien soldier and literally had just boss fights. It's like, here's about three or four enemies, there's a boss. Now just think about that game for a second, that game's maybe 95, there's about, how many bosses? Like over 25 unique bosses in most games these days can't even cope with two. It, it, that's the complaint about modern game design, but yeah, treasure make insane games and that's made a Wario game, so that's another plus point. Because <laughs> Wario is way better than Mario, in my opinion. <laughs> though, strange enough, their name's nowhere on the box of that one, just Nintendo. I wonder why they didn't want their own name on the box, though. But she wouldn't have much of a well known public company they are. Yep, Treasure made very few stinkers in the time, and if you play a Treasure game, you're always going to get a good time, pretty much. <laughs> That's another one, Astro Boy and the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, the Game Boy Advance version by them completely destroys the version Sonic Team made for, for the PS2. Yeah, they're entirely separate games and not related to each other, but gameplay wise, yeah, the, the Game Boy Advance completely destroys it. <laughs> Sonic Team 1 stands in no chance against it. Yep, so that's Treasure. Basically, never made a really truly bad game, though I do think Ikaruga's overrated. And there's way better space shooters out there, even by Treasure themselves. I mean, Gradius fired by them better than that. Which is interesting when you think about it, because, yeah, they left Konami and then ended up making a game for Konami. <laughs> How does that work? That's what happened anyway, so. Right, so, yep, so number three, and that's Taito. Yeah, another Japanese company. Who made a ton of them, and basically very important to the gaming community in general because, well, he made Space Invaders. That's one of the most popular, the first popular Japanese arcade games ever made. So, 
and they've made a ton of other amazing games. Well, they've got Bubble Bobble, Ninja Warriors, Rainbow Island, Parasol Stars, Buster Moon, Puzzle Bobble, oh, that's the same thing. Gucci Kara, Darius series, uh, weird, really odd ones like Slam Valiant, which is really odd. And they made some definitely unique games over the time, and usually their games are very well made. They've made a few stinkers over the time, like Treasure Like. Ones I could definitely think of is Raston Saga 2 and, uh, <laughs> and Violence Fight, or as its sequel's called Solitary Fighter. And them ones are just. <laughs> yeah, them ones are just bad fighting games. <laughs> That's to say, at the least. Well, I was saying Taito was one thing that was never strong, it was fighting games, but everything else they did a great job with. They made lots of good console games as well, so. Pretty much everyone who played games has probably played something by Taito sometime. But, I mean, look, they even use the name Taito on the boxes in most of the games still, even though they're now owned by Square Enix. But Taito still gets on the box. They don't do that with games like Tomb Raider and stuff, though, do they? No, even though technically they're by Eidos, but nope, they're called Square Games. But Taito, nope, they're, so, they're good enough to actually have the name left on. Or maybe, maybe it's not a Japanese thing, I don't know. <laughs> To be honest. Right, so number three, Data East. Oh, is that Data East? I mean, yeah, another Japanese arcade company. And unlike a lot of them, these are the only ones that are the ones in this list that are actually still not around. I mean, they pretty much disappeared once the PS1 came around. I mean, I wonder if the game I remember seeing by them on PS1. It probably wasn't the last game they made, but it was a game called, I think, called, called Trag or something, or Hard Edge, and it was essentially just a Resident Evil clone, but. You just, you, with robots instead of zombies. <laughs> Literally the same controls. I never played it, so I can't comment on that one, but yeah, Data East, I've made some. I mean, there's lots of things out of that company which just confuse me and amaze me at the same time. It's like, it's the most bizarre mascots of a company ever. I mean, what was the mascots? I mean, they had a, a fat Russian guy called Karnov that breathes fire. And here's a weird thing about this character in every single other game. It was in outside the game called Kano. He was a bad guy. <laughs> he was always trying to kill you. Well, set one, and that was Kano's Revenge. And that was a fighting game where he was just in the game. Yeah, that was a bit weird, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and the other character, uh, Chell of the Atomic Man. <laughs> yeah, just a random atomic Russian, an atomic guy who's also Russian. I don't know what this company had to obsess with Russians for, but from the game Atomic Runner. Another character also appeared in a fighting game as a final boss. <laughs> but yet again, only has a single actual game to his name. Which is an amazing game and a very difficult game. Never beaten it, but yep, they've made some great games. Title of, not title of Data Race, I mean, what's to think of it? We've got ones, we've got the early one. One of the earliest fighting games I think were made by then. I think Karate Champ. Not a fan of the game, but it's got some importance to it, but... Uh, twin... Uh, not Twin... Not twin B. Tumble Pop, Diet Gogo, and Joe Mac Returns. That series is like their Bubble Bubble games. The Joe Mac series, the k Ninja series. Uh, Bad Dudes vs. Ninjas. I think that... What that really called? I don't know. can't remember. I've got that name mixed up probably. <laughs> the utterly bizarre games like Trio the Punch, which which might be one of the weirdest games ever made. I mean, it's just so out there. No Tayo made a game which almost almost as weird as it called called Pre Ruler. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was almost as weird as it, but yeah. What else can I really say about data data reast or data reast or sometimes it's called Deco? They made a lot of really good games back then, and most people I'm sure, sure have played a game by them, but might not even realise it. They don't get but they don't get talked about much anymore because well they haven't been making games for a long time. But they made some other amazing ones like Boogie Wings, uh, Hippodrome, also called Fighting Fantasy, uh, the sequel that was called Death Raid or Mutant Fighter. Yeah, the list just goes on then. Robocop, I can't forget Robocop. 
Captain America and the Avengers. Uh, still one of the best Avenger games. Still one of the funniest as well. <laughs> If you're playing, if you're playing a Mega Drive or arcade version, it's not Super Nintendo one, which they kind of screwed up on. But yeah, they made tons of great games. They don't get much credit anymore, and they're probably missing loads of the names out because they've made that many. <laughs> right, so I don't, yeah, Karamai was gonna be the fourth one in this list, but because of the, because of, well, crap, they are these days, they didn't get. So I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick Activision instead. I was really, well, Activision just make games like Call of Duty and all that. Well, well, that might be the case these days, but think about Activision as a, as a history. It was the first third party publisher pretty much in the world. And every, pretty much every single game they had made on the Atari 2600 was pretty much had, well, probably the most logical graphics in for them. I mean, well, we have Frostbite, Spider Fighter, uh, Mega Mania. Pitfall, which might be one of the very first one, the early console platform games ever made. Uh, Pitfall, Plaque Attack, Keystone Capers, Kaboom, which is almost like an early music game in a way when you think about it. Yeah, Activision, when it comes to Tyson 600, could not be beaten pretty much. They was like the kings of that system. <laughs> I mean, they had technically the most detailed and like best graphics of the system, and even some of the best gameplay for the system as well. And then you got to think of thing: the amount of games Activision have published is insane. They've published games by all sorts, of, like made port, published arcade ports of games from Taito, SNK, Sega, an absolutely insane amount of companies they've published games for. Like, they, they might not develop them, but they. have Rampage, all sorts. Activision, just you just go on game FAQs and look at all the games Activision published. The list, especially early on, is absolutely insane. They have published so many games, so I'm guarantee you, if you've got a game collection, you've probably got something by Activision. <laughs> it's not you're just gonna have one because they've done that many games for them. There's also some series that they've definitely been the best of any other companies. I mean, nearly all the best Transformer games are all of Activision on the name, for example. Well, some series they have completely ruined, like SpongeBob. I mean, I know it sounds like a weird thing as a kid's game, but if you look at some of the ones before Activision, but like, there was much better quality. But that's a, but that's, a mod, that's a modern Activision thing. I mean, the older Activision seems to actually well, try probably a bit better. And they went and published some sad amount of stuff. But no one's really gonna credit them for it because most people just think of us is that Call of Duty company these days. I mean, yeah, but well, they've done so much more than that. I mean, I think one of my favourite PS2 games, Gungrave, I would never got to have played that if it wasn't for Activision because the publisher in US Sega didn't publish it in Europe, so and some of other games as well, so I'm not gonna diss Activision for for being a bad company because when it comes to publishing games they've published some amazing ones over the time. And they might not have made all of them, they might have just published them and but if they've also done they developed some good games as well. Sure then most things are old much way older games but Well anyway that was my response so thank you for watching and listening.